Let's bring in international relations professor Alexei Moraviev, who joins us now live from Perth in Australia. Uh, Alexei, good to have you on the show. Um, Vladimir Putin has a couple of problems on his hands. He's dealing with uh, falling ratings uh, as well as a battered economy, not only because of falling oil prices, but also because of the coronavirus pandemic. I mean, is this going to be a real test of resilience, resiliency for the president's party? Well, I would say yes and no. Yes, definitely, uh, the Russians won't change. Uh, there's been a lot of push to um, uh, by the Kremlin for the Russians to accept uh, proposed amendments to the constitutions uh, constitution, which has been uh, which which have been passed. On the other hand, as as you have pointed out, there's been some dissatisfaction, first of all, with the performance uh, of of the government. Uh, with regards to um, ongoing uh, debacle concerning the pen pension report uh, reform, uh, then obviously the, the the country's economic performance, the shutdown associated with COVID-19 pandemic, um, the general tiredness that Putin has been in power for over 20 years now, and and obviously some frustration with decisions, for example, to to dismiss the governor of one of Russia's far eastern regions, on. Uh, on, on grounds of corruption and association with um, acts of crime, which uh, triggered some popular unrest and, and, and people took to the streets to express their dissatisfaction um, with the decision by the Kremlin to oust the person whom they voted for. On the other hand, and, and that needs to be uh, un understood, Putin doesn't really face much of an opposition. The position that contests some of the um, uh, some of the positions uh, uh, which the Russians would go and vote for, whether they're governor's positions or or election of local parliaments, are predominantly contested contested by the so-called political opposition that is represented in the Russian parliament. The reality is that that opposition uh, is not much different from from um, the, 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 the rest of the political elite that is closely associated with, with the Kremlin. The true political opposition, uh, which may be manifested by Navalny supporters, for example, has very limited representa uh, representation in the con current elections. As Alexei, a result- I, I, wanna, even, I wanna ask you about that. You say he doesn't face any real challenges, but uh, he obviously is facing challenges from Alexei Navalny. But um, in some places, Alexei Navalny and his team uh, have uh, been supporting uh, smart candidates. What I mean by smart is anybody who's in a position to win, whether they be communist or, 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 or nationalist. What do you think this says in terms of uh, the tactics of the opposition? Well, I, I think they understand that um, if they would go solely uh, and, and if, they would, uh, if they would try to put their candidates, uh, prima facie, uh, the chances of them actually winning uh, the elections would be fairly slim because their popular base, uh, despite being incredibly popular on social media platforms, it still remains it's still pretty low. So they would rather use um, other candidates that are associated with this sort of legal opposition represented in the Russian parliament as icebreakers for them to actually get some sort of a deal and 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 get people who may have. A degree of representation of the interests of, say, supporters of Navalny or other, what the Russians describe as non-systemic opposition. However, the, the reality is, uh, even if such deals would um, uh, uh, would, would have been made, and, and and the person who may act as a smart candidate would come in into the job, uh, the questions would 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 still raise. Um, uh, whether this person would honor any pre-election obligations or not, because one way or another, this person will have to work very closely with the Kremlin. And once they get inside the political system, um, any 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 opportunity to exercise independent political maneuvering effectively diminishes. So okay. in this sense, the, 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 the strategic fallout from uh, any possible outcomes, which may be initially perceived to be not in the favor of the, of the Kremlin, may be questionable uh, in the longer run, simply because the way how Putin designed the political system in Russia. Okay. It's designed over, over a period of a decade, and it's a very tight uh, vertical hierarchical system uh, with Kremlin controlling every aspect of, uh, of, of political life uh, that is happening on the ground. Okay, Alexei, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you very much for your analysis. I do appreciate it.